Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Chilled Fossil. Today, it's brought to you here live from New York City. It's always in New York City. We're not exactly in Times Square. We're a few blocks away. And I say that because a lot of people have asked about the studio and how it keeps changing. Fact is that this space was used for Malaysian dramas, Korean dramas, when these international you know, broadcasting stations wanted to film in the US, we would rent out the studio uh, to them. Obviously in 2020, all of that ended. This place started collecting dust, it was deserted. Uh, and so when I decided to start my channel, I said, why not do it here and kind of revitalize this place for my channel. The reason I bring that up is because the apps that I'm about to go over today for productivity apply to a very broad range of people from business owners, uh, students, uh, and anyone who's trying to get any kind of productivity done in their life. That's a, that's a pretty big statement right there. And although these apps can be downloaded on any tablet, the S8 Ultra with its 14.6 inch screen does give it a designated advantage. And we're going to talk about that in this video as well. So before I get right into it, make sure to subscribe, like this video. Uh, it really helps grow a small channel like mine, especially we're trying to hit 100,000. We have 2000 and I appreciate every single one of you. Let's get into it. So the first app I want to start with is called Notion and this is the worst Starting off with the heavy hitters fam, uh, Notion is like a notebook. It's a notebook that is extremely smart and I basically use Notion to organize my entire life. The way I use it, my life is kind of divided into three main parts. Uh, we're talking business. We're talking college and we're talking YouTube. And so for each of these three parts, I've designated a specific dashboard, which is then broken down further into, you know, more detailed things like meetings, schedules, uh, notes, camera settings on my YouTube one. I'll actually show you guys my YouTube one right now. So you kind of see exactly what it looks like. Um, and the reason, well, first of all, it should be completely obvious why such an app uh, is important. A note a note keeping app that has a lot of functional extras but at the same time is very minimal um, but when you have a bigger screen 14.6 inches you you the layout that you see allows for a lot more interaction and that's more important when it comes to studying because I like to create flashcards for myself and notion allows you to have drop downs so I might have questions have a drop down answer questions and things like that and having 14.6 inches allows for a more intimate level of interaction with my notes that I wouldn't get anywhere else and that makes it awesome outside of that the notion app also has a few widgets for your Android devices and those widgets act like shortcuts to specific dashboards so for example if I was working on a new YouTube video for the day I wouldn't need to you know go open up the notion app then go from there and click on the YouTube dashboard then you know go down into the video that I want to work on I can simply click a widget on the home screen of my tablet and go directly to the right page that I'm looking for. And so simply put, the Notion app basically makes getting work done faster because I'm spending less time trying to organize. So definitely recommend the Notion app. Number two is the Samsung Notes app. And this thing I feel is a little bit underrated. Um, a lot of people go on and on about Notability and um, uh, what's the other one? Good Notes, like those Apple apps. But Samsung Notes is absolutely amazing. I love it, especially with the S8 Ultra, because not only are you getting a bigger screen, obviously that's a major advantage, but also a super low S Pen latency, which means taking notes becomes so much more natural. And that's something that I'm really looking forward to. Now, how I use, how I kind of take uh, Samsung Notes to the next level is I use it in conjunction with Notion. Uh, when I'm in lecture, when I'm in the lecture, when I'm sitting down and viewing the lecture slides, I like to take notes by hand. I don't like typing up notes while I'm in the lecture. And so what Samsung Notes allows me to do is not only, you know, take these notes, but also export them to the right topic in Notion so I can 
and it's like two clicks so all i do is share share as like a png into my notion and i can select which folder in my notion so for example if it's in the college dashboard under biology under chapter three under section 3.5 i can take my lecture notes and put them right under my notion notes and have everything organized and that's absolutely amazing because now when i when it comes time to review when you know when i need to go back or do something all i got to do is open up this one uh, chapter and section on the notion app and suddenly all of my lecture notes are there all of my typed up textbook notes or whatever it might be are all there if i take snippets from online uh, resources i can also add those onto notion everything is organized really neatly in one single location and that's extremely powerful uh, and so I think Samsung Notes is very underrated. I think there are tons of features. Uh, you can turn your notes into PDF. You can turn your notes into PNGs, share them across multiple apps. So it's a very, very powerful app that's only going to get better with a bigger screen and lower S Pen latency. The next app that I would recommend is Google Keeps. And the reason I recommend it is because it's a very easy way for me to add a kind of to-do list to my devices. I have it here on my Z Flip 3 uh, and it's just so simple. It's right there. It's a wi it's I'm basically using the widget all the time and I have this to-do list. So for November or December, January, February and all I do like insurance claims I need to file, uh, pump plumbing units and th invoices, things like that. All of that is listed and so I check it out like just like a to-do list and it crosses off. So it's really nice, really colorful as well. So aesthetic is important important of course um, but another app that's very similar to Google keeps is tick tick many of you if you're in this productivity niche may have heard of it this is just like a, a to-do list as well except it also doubles as kind of a calendar so for example uh, if you add something like this reading at 7 p.m. it's going to add it onto your calendar uh, and it works a lot faster I know Google keeps can do the same thing as well but this is a lot faster you don't need to go in and select the time and scroll through all that crap I don't like doing any of that I just want to be able to say um, this Thursday I'm reading and it'll automatically pick that up. It's smart enough to know exactly what that means. Obviously this is important for a college student because right when the uh, semester starts, you get your papers, you get your exam schedule and everything. And right on day one, I like to add all of that to my calendar. And aside from that, for the business people, of course, now we're talking business meetings, we're talking uh, upcoming appointments and things like that. And having a fast way to add those to your calendars and get those notifications coming to your devices across all your devices is really awesome. And the other thing with a to-do list is ideas. To-do lists don't need to be about appointments and schedules. It can also be about ideas. For example, when I'm writing a YouTube video and I have a really good idea of something I want to talk about, I'm never going to remember that. No matter how much I think I'll remember this, by the time I sit down, I'll have completely forgotten. So having an app that I can quickly open and just type in a note like, hey, this was a great idea for an intro, put it down and just keep it safe there is super powerful because those tiny ideas you get end up becoming those really good ideas. And so this app, highly recommended. But if you don't want to get this app, a good alternative is Google Keeps. And next, number four, Anki. I definitely recommend this app for students primarily. So this is more of a college-based app that I'm talking about here. This is how I study. This is my like A to Z studying technique. All I do is I make flashcards and I study them. Flashcards don't just need to be definitions. They can be problems. They can be solutions to a problem. Whatever it might be, get creative. And this app, Anki, lets me do that. Now, what's powerful about this app versus Quizlet and these other flashcard apps is that there's this whole Pomodoro method of studying that I use. Uh, it brings back old things, like things you might have learned two months ago, and it makes you relearn them. And that relearning makes them sit in your head for a lot longer and a lot more permanent you can also put in the exam date and it'll kind of you know work with that schedule so it's a really cool app definitely recommend any student to download this app and start in incorporating it into your studying techniques and for the final the most important productivity app 
that you can download on your S8 Ultra has to be Samsung DeX, ladies and gentlemen. And listen, Samsung DeX is like a stage. If you have an entire orchestra, but the stage is flimsy, it's up and down, the, there's no atmosphere, it doesn't matter how good the instrument sounds, the experience isn't going to be pleasant. And DeX is that stage that makes working with all these apps a very pleasant experience. Now, I know people have attacked me in the past. They've been they've been attacking me, fam. Uh, and they've been telling me that the iPad Pro, it's faster, it has a faster processor, it's brighter uh, than the S8 Ultra, all these things, which is great. I mean, cool. But I don't care from a user perspective. I don't care if it's faster, if like the only thing I can do is this, like just have these vertical columns to do my multitasking. Get this garbage out of here, fam. Literally, get this garbage out of here. I don't need it. I don't want it. When I multitask, I want to use the apps that I have to their utmost uh, power. I want to use them the best that I can. In, and, and that means being able to use them as flexibly as I want. And that's what Dex gives me. I'm not just working vertical columns anymore. I can have notes, Samsung notes open on one side. I can have Anki and, you know, converting my notes into flashcards open on top. And then I can have a YouTube video playing on the bottom. And I can, you know, have this set up any way I want. And the amazing part about it all is that it's on a 14.6 inch screen. That's amazing. That's literally going to liberate these studying sessions, these uh, productivity sessions, these meetings, having a bigger screen that's super portable, that's powerful, and that's running Samsung DeX is going to allow me to get so much more done um, in, in a much faster, much more pleasurable experience. So yeah, for the guys who are going to tell me in the comments again, uh, you know, the iPad Pro is better, the iPad Pro is this and that, guess what fam? I don't care. I've used the iPad Pro. I've had it for one summer. I had it for one summer, two months, and I I, I was it. I was it. I I couldn't do what I wanted to do. I had to kind of conform to what Apple thought was the best way to do something and that was these vertical slots that I could move you know like left and right which is interesting which is nice which is you know quick but it's not the flexibility that I wanted I didn't care that it got brighter for me okay great like I'm like I'm sitting outside in the sun doing my work no thank you okay I'll be indoors um, I don't care if it's half a second or even a whole second faster I don't care it just doesn't matter to me when I'm working on my notes and transferring flashcards over. What matters to me in that moment is to be able to do it as I want to, is, is to be able to do it flexibly. Honestly, I don't mean to be mean to Apple. <laughs> um, I, even though we've never actually reviewed an Apple. No, 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 no. We've reviewed the Apple AirPods third generation. So you can't even say that I don't review Apple products. I absolutely do. Um, it's just that they don't excite me as much as Samsung ones do. Like the Z Flip, the S8 Ultra. These products are exciting. And that makes reviewing them a lot more fun a lot more engaging um, my next video will be back in the regular studios while i do the s22 review s22 cases and all of that good stuff so make sure to be subscribed to get the hookup on all of those new products and projects that are coming out until next time ladies and gentlemen take it easy peace